Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and this video covers hydraulic flight control systems and helicopters. If you're new to, channel, to the channel, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you learned something new. Now let's get started. In general, helicopters can fall into one of three categories of flight controls in regards to hydraulics. They either have no flight controls, or sorry, no hydraulic flight controls, um, just bare bones push-pull rods. They're going to have some sort of hydraulically uh, hydraulically assisted or boosted flight controls or they're going to be fully hydraulic all right so we'll break it down and take it piece by piece starting with the no hydraulics this is something like your uh, robinson r22 type helicopters they're pretty simple in design um, they're cheap to produce and to maintain and lightweight in nature. Uh, they make great training helicopters, very good light work helicopters. They operate by having the, the push-pull rods that directly move the swash plate and the tail rotor for the helicopter control. The helicopters, uh, once again, are lightweight, which means they generally don't need any extra mechanical advantage to move the flight controls or to move any part of the drivetrain, or sorry, the flight control system. Usually your birds that weigh maybe 1,000 to 2,000 pounds won't have the hydraulic uh, boosted or assisted or any kind of hydraulic flight control system. But what happens is your helicopter gets uh, bigger and wants to carry more cargo. Well, as weight increases, it takes more force to move the flight controls. It's kind of like how a half-ton pickup um, is harder to turn than, say, a go-kart. Um, so the truck has power steering. That's kind of like hydraulic boosted or hydraulically assisted flight controls. Uh, you still have... Uh, the ability to move the flight controls if the system fails or if there's no power steering or hydraulic uh, assistance or boosting, but it's going to significantly reduce the workload um, by having the system operational. So once again, it reduces workload and it serves as kind of like uh, power steering for a helicopter. Um, it's uh, once again installed in helicopters that carry more passengers, cargo, and just general overall weight. So something like the uh, R44, which was actually originally designed like the R22 without it, but they found that it was a little bit more uh, workload on the pilot, so in they incorporated a hydraulically assisted system into the R44. Also something like the, uh, the Bell 206, also known in the military as the TH-67 or the OH-58, it that had this type of design. Once again, this type of design, if you were to turn the hydraulics off or if it was a failed state, you could still move the flight controls. It's just going to require a little bit more force. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how hydraulic system in helicopters uh, works, I'll give you a quick down and dirty explanation. Each helicopter varies slightly in design, so make sure you look at your operator's manual. But in general, you're going to have some sort of hydraulic reservoir or manifold. This holds the fluid of the system. Attached to it, you're going to have some sort of pump. Once again, this is pumping the fluid through the system. And I'll just keep it, uh, the black lines being supply lines, and we'll do white lines as uh, the return lines, but I'll kind of outline that as I go. Um, so from the pump, it's going to be pushing the fluid in um, to the users of the system, which is going to be the servo actuators. And we'll just draw those here. This is um, really what is moving the flight controls. This is what's, uh, what's giving you that... Um, mechanical advantage as these servos expand and contract to move the flight controls. So once again, servo actuators or servos as are commonly associated to. So you're going to have something like the uh, lateral servo, the longitudinal servo, a collective servo. These three are um, attached to the uh, non-rotating swash plate of the main rotor. So when you think lateral, think left and right inputs, longitudinal being forward and back inputs, collective being the entire swash plate goes up and down. Um, some helicopters are going to have a tail rotor servo. Some don't see the need in having hydraulics on the tail rotor. It just depends, so that tail rotor one isn't always there. But this pump is pressurizing the fluid to the servos to move these flight controls. Coming from uh, the servos, it is a closed circuit system, so you're going to have a return line that goes back um, to keep the entire system closed. And we'll see if I can draw a nice, somewhat straight, pretty line for you here. And that's going to be the return line. So as it comes from the reservoir to the pump, generally going in this direction, goes to the servos, from the servos returns, and then goes back to the reservoir. That's kind of how, how it flows through the system. Once again, it's closed circuit. Um, 
Uh, so when you move a control, say a move forward cyclic, the system boosts the input that you're making and it makes it easier to, to move that control. It reduces the force required to move the control, almost taking away all the force of the movement because hydraulics are pushing what you're already pushing. Um, so with the hydraulic systems, uh, they found that uh, they needed to install some sort of um, artificial feel or a force trim into the system because they found that pilots tended to move the flight controls in some instances while being unaware that they're making any kind of inputs or movement into the controls because there was just no feedback in the controls. So what they did is they developed, once again, an artificial feel or a force trim uh, to add some sort of re resistance in the system so it did actually feel like you're moving the flight controls. All right, so moving on from uh, hydraulically assisted or boosted, we have the fully hydraulic um, system. These are the, the type that many of your military helicopters, namely your Apache, is installed with. Um, and the reason for that is because flight testing and historic crash investigations have found that hydraulically boosted systems can experience what's called a servo transparency phenomenon, also known as a jack stall. And this defeats that. So what, it, what was going on is the helicopter would aggressively maneuver or g-load too much too fast in this boosted system and the system just could not keep up. The hydraulics could not flow fast enough through the system and so what happened is the flight controls would seize up in like a jamming or a binding feel and the helicopter would therefore just crash before the hydraulics could catch up in the system. So naturally, military helicopters, uh, they need to be able to move or, or maneuver quickly, aggressively. So the way around that is they developed fully hydraulic systems um, to defeat the servo transparency phenomenon or the jack stalls. Now in this system, they pressurized it up to about 3,000 PSI, and this high pressure in the hydraulic system just overpowered any type of um, lower pressures associated in the, the boosted or the um, assisted type of hydraulic systems, but it enabled the helicopters to aggressively maneuver. You could G-load, you know, add, you know, up to two Gs down into some of the negative Gs without these servos or hydraulic systems locking up in any way, shape, or form. So it allowed these helicopters to aggressively maneuver um, anytime, day and night, back and forth from one extreme to the, uh, uh, to the other. So aggressive slash G-loading aggressive maneuvers and G-loading is what this allowed. The only downside to this system is unlike the boosted system, if the hydraulics are off or they're completely failed, you have no authority in the flight controls. You can't move anything. So because of this, these fully hydraulic systems have to have redundant systems. So you're gonna have multiple reservoirs, multiple pumps, multiple lines, so that if, in the event that one part fails, the backup system can still maneuver the helicopter uh, or maneuver the flight controls. Um, Whereas the assisted, you can still move it. It's just going to be a lot more force to move flight controls. So it has to have the redundant system in this one. Um, that wraps up the three types of hydraulic flight controls. Once again, you have no hydraulics, a boosted system, and then the fully hydraulic system. Um, if you enjoyed, enjoyed the video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And thanks for watching. As always, I'm Jacob, and this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flight.